Yogi. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be going over Side Crow and Ekapada Kundianasana 1. So if you're new to arm balances and you haven't floated yet or had your feet come off the ground, then we recommend that you take a step back to our Crow Pose video. That's usually the best entry into arm balancing, as well as reviewing the foundational poses of Plank and Chaturanga because we'll be using the same muscle stability, strength, and uh, technique from those foundational poses in this class. Before we begin, make sure that your wrists are nice and warmed up. So you can check out our wrist warm-up, wrist health video to make sure that your wrists are ready to support the weight of your body. First, we're gonna cover side crow. So before we even break down the mechanics of what's happening, we'll just show you really quick what it is so you can get an idea of where we're headed with this. That's it. Done. Easy, right? All right. See you in the next video. End of the tutorial. <laughs> no, so for that, you saw that it's a, a pretty deep twist with the chest because you have to hook your opposite elbow to the outside of the thigh uh, before you can even come down into the arm balance. So we always wanna make sure that not only our wrists are warmed up when we come into side crow, but also that we've done a little bit of twisting first. The best entry that is usually used when you come into side crow is coming from chair twist. So that's a great warm up to try is just to be in chair, take that twist, hook the elbow, and then make sure that the spine is nice and warmed up before you put the weight of the legs onto the arm because uh, it is a lot of twisting. So as you saw in mine, when I come into side crow, I can put my weight on both my elbows. I can also do it with one, but for me, it's more comfortable to have both and I have a pretty deep twist. So it's actually really easy and more comfortable for me to come into that. Um, but I have a much more difficult time up leveling from there. So if I wanted to come onto one arm, uh, then it's much more difficult because I've trained myself to be used to having the weight on that other elbow. So in Flo's, in Flo's case, when he comes into side crow, he only places the thigh onto one elbow and the other elbow is floating free, specifically for the reason that he can start to lift up this hand and work towards that one-handed side crow. Which we will do another tutorial on, one-handed side crow. But there's basically two options of side crow. Either you touch with both elbows the body or only with one elbow. So with both elbows is what Bree is usually doing. With one elbow and one arm is usually what I'm, what I'm doing in a side crow. So there's two options here. It's good to work on both, good to be able to do both. But know that with the one where your arms, both arms are touching the, the thigh, there's limitations to it if you're working towards one-handed side crow. The easiest way to integrate this into your, into your flow, into a class, is when you are in a chair twist, like Bree said, and then you squat down. Maybe let's show this again. So you're in this chair twist. Rotate to the, yep, that's perfect. And then you squat all the way down. You place the hands down. So remember everything from crow and from chaturanga we covered in those videos. Then you start to shift forward, bend the elbows, keep the triceps in, wrap the triceps in so the elbows are pointing back. You point the toes, bring the heels close to the hips, and you hold it there. It's important to see that usually one shoulder dips down a lot, and you want to make sure that you lift that shoulder up so that both shoulders are on the same height. So you keep everything here nice and stable and come back down. Very good. So really building on top of your crow pose, very common to have one shoulder dip down. It's good to film yourself if you're practicing by yourself or have someone take a look to really lift that shoulder up so that both shoulders are leveled and on the same height. You're not gonna injure yourself, so to say, if that shoulder is dipping down. It's not like a serious injury right away. But if you train that way and if you give yourself permission to always be tipping the, um, tipping the shoulder forward in that pose, then 
is just uh, a lot of hard work for the shoulder girdle, and it can lead to injury down the road. So it's important to build good habits, make sure your shoulders are level. We know it's a lot harder to keep that uh, floating shoulder lifted. We get it. <laughs> it was hard for us too, but it's really important that you make sure that the foundation is there and you feel stable in the pose because it's only going to benefit you over time. Not just with the injury, but also if you want to up level from there and build on top, like we said in all the previous videos, it's important to refine and clean up those foundations. And this is definitely a foundational pose if you want to move towards Ekapada Kundinyasana 1, which we will explain in a second, or one-handed side crow. So you want to make sure that this is all super clean and you work towards that and keep refining your side crow. From that side crow, it's pretty straightforward to come into Ekapada Kundinyasana 1. If you can't remember those names, it's all good. Over time, you, you will get more familiar with them. But there's basically two variations of Ekapada Kundinyasana. There's one and two. Today, we're covering one. The second variation of it will be a whole separate video because it's a very uh, different pose than the first variation. But the first variation goes really well with side crow, so make sure you got that side crow down before you move into Ekapada Kundinyasana 1. Also known as Ekapada 1. Ekapada so that's, 1. That's easier to remember. <laughs> let's show it real quick, so let's have Bree come into it. You start with a side crow and then you extend that bottom leg out and the top leg back. Very good. Yep. So you want to make sure again the shoulders are leveled and this is your Ekapada one and come back down. So it's a pretty deep twist just like in a side crow but I think it's even a little bit deeper since you extend the legs out and you actually have more weight going down and also back and to the side. So it could potentially pull you deeper into a twist so you really want to make sure you're nice and warmed up here but really fun way to you know if the instructor offers chair twist and the option to stay there for five breaths you know you can just come into a side crow and then from, from there take it into Ekapada 1. Even if the instructor did not specifically cue it, you can of course always add to what the instructor offers and always integrate your own things to make this practice your own. And that's a really fun way at least for us to always add some arm balances in in a very nice, nice way to do that from chair twist. Something you will discover along the way is that once you have these arm balances down, let's say crow pose, one-legged crow, side crow, ekapada one, that from there on it's really all the same foundations, the same principles with the arms, with the weight distribution, what your core is doing, what your fingers are doing. And then you, from there you can start to explore different leg positions. So there's really no limit with what your legs can do and what funky positions your legs can be in. The, it's always coming back to the same foundations, which is crow pose, chaturanga with the arms, the elbows, the hands, the core. It's, it's all the same and then you can start to explore and maybe come up with and invent and create your own arm balances, mostly changing the shapes of your legs and what the legs are doing. If they're crossed, they extend it this way or this way. There's really no, no end, so you can come up with lots of cool stuff on your own. For Ekapada 1, it's really important to shift again forward because you're extending one leg back and to keep everything in balance with this teeter-totter principle you want to as you extend the leg back you want to also shift the weight more forward you keep the back body engaged so you're not dipping down with the shoulders so it's actually again a full body pose the whole body has to work although all of the weight is on your hands and your wrists still your full body has to work to keep you in this shape. So let's do it one more time and pay attention to how she's shifting forward as the leg comes back. And for you this might be more obvious or less. Really depends on your proportions of your body. Uh, but let's take a look. So you're setting up again with side crow. Your foundation. And whenever you're ready, you extend that top leg back. Now, See how she's shifting forward, yep, the weight into the fingertips, very good, and then bring it back to side crow, see how she's shifting back, very good, and come back down. So if you try this out and you have a side crow and you want to go to Ekapada 1 and you extend the leg back but you're always falling back 
towards the leg that you're extending back, that means you're not shifting enough forward. So you have to shift even more forward. And at this point, I think it's important to mention that balance is very often where you feel like you're, you're falling. So the point where you are in balance and where you can hold the pose in the most efficient way is usually the point where you feel like, as a beginner, that you're falling. So you need to push that comfort zone just a tiny bit more and overcome that fear of falling and go just a tiny bit more forward and then you will find yourself in balance and also oftentimes in a very effortless position of balance because then the whole body is in position and stable and you can fully focus on your hands and your forearms to use the fingers as brakes to continue balancing in this position. Thank you so much for joining us today for this tutorial. We hope you have some good tips that you can take away from this and build into your own practice. Keep in mind that arm balancing can take weeks, months, even years to get some of these poses down. And this tutorial is not meant for you to watch it and then be able to immediately do it. It's to watch it and then probably drill it a hundred times and then you can actually do it. Or thousands. Or thousands. They really got to put in the work. Yeah. So go easy on yourself if you don't get it right away. We didn't get it right away either. We've been practicing for several years and this is where we're at now. And now we can wake up in the morning and float right into crow, one-legged crow. It's like very effortless um, because we've been drilling it so many times over the last several years. So. Be patient with yourself, enjoy the process, laugh at yourself if you fall or come out of it. It's all good. It's all part of the journey of exploring movement in your body and connecting with your breath and just having fun. If you'd like to take a photo of your pose, your best side crow variation or Ekapata one, then you can post it on Instagram or throw it in a story and tag us in it. We would love to see your version of the pose. So have fun with it and uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this tutorial, if you found it useful for you and you know that there's a lot of great new content coming your way, then please support us by hitting this triangle in the bottom corner of the video and subscribing and that way you can find more of our videos to come over the next decades. So thank you so much for being here with us today and we will see you in the next tutorial. Namaste Yogi. Namaste.